hope you're doing well. This video is going to be a comparison and review of all the drawing or journaling pens I've tried. When I was first starting out with bullet journaling and hand lettering, I had absolutely no idea what supplies to get because I had no reference for what was good or bad, so if you are struggling with what are going to be the best supplies to invest in, this should really help you become more informed before you start spending a lot of your money. Keep in mind these are just my opinions, so you may still want to do some experimenting in order to find the feel that you really like because everyone has their own preferences and this is just one person's opinion. So with that, let's get started. So first we're gonna be starting out with the Uniball 207 by Signo. This has got to be one of my most holy grail pens. It's a gel retractable roller ball with a one millimeter tip. I would consider this a thicker line as far as drawing and journaling pens go. It works best on soft surfaces like a notebook or a journal. Otherwise, it can be pretty spotty. You'll see in the photo that I took that there are some patches where the ink didn't lay down properly. This pen is very liquidy. It has to dry before you touch it, otherwise it will smudge. But once it's dry, it has a beautiful, vibrant black color. It's almost like paint on the page, which is why I love it in my journal. Next, we have the Micron PN Pigma Pen by Sakura. The ink used to make Pigma pens is supposed to be very resistant to oils and chemical degradation, which is why it's called archival ink. It's very smooth going on and it really sits on top of the paper as opposed to sinking in which is what can cause the bleeding effect that a lot of pens have when you're using thinner paper like the paper in journals. This pen has a plastic nib and it's about half a millimeter wide. I like the way this pen draws because the tip has no edges so you can hold this pen at an angle and still get a really smooth looking line. Next we have the Pigma Micron 03 by Sakura. This tip is 0.3 millimeters wide. Again, smooth ink application, but what I don't like about this is it has a cornered tip, which makes it harder to create a smooth handwriting style because the pen must be held at almost a 90 degree angle. Next we have the Pigma Graphic One by Sakura. This is a one millimeter wide felt tip marker. The shape is like a bullet as opposed to a chisel tip, which makes it good for writing in journals. Because it has that archival ink, this marker will not bleed through the paper like other markers do. This marker is better for drawing bigger letters or shading in large areas because you can cover more ground quickly. Because it is felt tip, the tip does wear down as you use it, especially on paper that has texture. Next we have the Pilot Oil-Based Twin Marker. This pen is double-sided. I almost give up on this pen because when you draw with it on paper like this, it does have some feathering. And what I mean by that is if you look really close, there's almost these hair-like lines that stick out from the original line you drew. This is because the ink really sinks into the paper a lot like a Sharpie marker would. This means a lot of bleeding through the page unless you're using quite a thick paper. But because this pen has oil-based ink, it's actually perfect for writing on washi tape. Because once it dries, it's not going anywhere and it looks really great. Next we have the Statler Pigment Liner. I don't have a lot to say about this pen because it's pretty basic. It has a fine 0.3 millimeter tip and it's not as soft as the Micron pens, but it is smudge proof and very precise. The long metal tip makes it great for using with rulers, so I like to use this pen when I outline my bullet journal doing my monthly log. Because it is waterproof, you can also go in with watercolor on top of the pen and it won't smudge. Next we have the Lay Pen Technical Drawing Pen by Marby. It's got a 0.3 millimeter tip, and I found a lot of similarities to the Pigma ink pens. The ink is very similar, however the pen tip is actually felt as opposed to plastic. This makes lettering a little easier because it feels softer on the page, but I did notice that if you try to write really quickly, the ink has a little trouble keeping up, and it can come off a little patchy. Next we have the Alvin Pen Sticks Waterproof Permanent Marker. It has a 0.3 millimeter felt tip and it's another oil-based marker that can be used on other materials like plastic. But overall, I don't enjoy the experience of this pen. I found some feathering and bleeding which can be expected with a marker like this, but also the tip is kind of long and awkward. So if you add a little too much pressure, it will give and bend a little. You can probably kind of see this in the demo because it did mess up my line a little bit. This last pen is probably my favorite. It's the Curatec Zig Cartoonist Mangaka Outline Pen in size 05. I just really like the feel of this pen. It's a 0.5 millimeter felt tip. It's very firm, it draws nice and smooth, and the actual pen just feels nice in the hand. Because it's water-based, it's not gonna bleed at all, which makes it perfect for working in a journal. 
There's some additional helpful information on where I like to purchase my pens as well as links to everything talked about in this video down below in the description. So if you're interested, that resource is there for you. Otherwise, have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you next week with another new video. Bye guys.